Spirit Animal is a 2006 Beneteau Cyclades 50.5. This boat is 50.5 feet long, has a 6.8 foot bottom draft, and a 68 foot air draft, and weighs 35 gross tons. Powered by a 110 turbo diesel Yanmar inboard engine with 100 gallons of diesel, solar production of 3,050 watts, and a lithium house battery bank capacity of 1,350 amp hours at 12 volt, or more than 16,000 kilowatt hours, along with holding up to 210 gallons of fresh water with a water maker production of 40 gallons per hour, this boat has been purpose-built well for far, far off-grid sailing. Inside, the boat has three full cabins, two full bathrooms, and a dedicated shower room, a very large salon with full theater entertainment, gorgeous kitchen, and even a mini workshop. As well, there's tons and tons of outdoor and inside storage. Welcome on board Spirit Animal, a truly unique, very customized Beneteau. Now, this boat is part of a YouTube channel called Spirit Animal, where Sash and Raph show their adventures going around the world, partying, spearfishing, living it up, really living the best life. So it's really cool being on board this boat. But more than that, in this video, we're gonna be talking about all the refits they did to make this boat as spectacular as it is, because this boat really should have been left in a junkyard. But Raph put in the work, and now we're here. So far on my channel, I've done more than 10 boat reviews on catamarans, on monohulls, and even strange barge things. Out of all of those, I've always liked the boats, but I've never been jealous of them. This boat, Spirit Animal, has some truly unique features about it that I hate to say it, but I'm truly envious of. So I'm very excited to show you guys this boat. We're gonna start all the way up here at the bow, work our way all the way back to the stern, everything has been customized back there, show you guys their dinghy, which is a huge part of the sailing and cruising life. Then we're gonna work our way inside throughout the salon, the port, and then the starboard side cabins, and then the V-Berth master bedroom, which really is the shining part of this entire boat. Let's get to it. All right, starting up here on the bow, the first thing I like to actually talk about is the anchor. Your anchor is so important when you wanna live out on the water, and you don't wanna be at a marina. Now what they have here is half inch chain, 170 feet of it, more than enough for any depth you want to be in. But their anchor is a really cool one. It's a 77 pound stainless steel Ultra. Ultras are one of the newest anchors on the market and I hear a lot of good things about them so we can chat with them a little bit later. It being stainless steel is gonna make it that much heavier and honestly that much shinier. I would love to see it, but unfortunately it's doing its job right now. Now as we can see also, they run a double bridle system with some chafe guard here going down into the water so that way nothing's clanking. Something I really like about their boat here is you can evenly put two anchors onto here with your roller going far off the bow. And if we look at the bow, no marks. It's really good to see that the anchor is not able to come back and hit the bow of the boat. Here's their electric windlass, something I'm very jealous of on my boat while I'm still pulling it hand over hand. Especially if being half inch chain, a 50 foot boat, you need to have an electric windlass. You can't do this stuff by hand, it's just not reasonable. You've got your controller for it right here. A ton of space, very well laid out. As well, here's their backup anchor. It's really cool to see they've got that right here. Stainless steel, big, big clip on it as well. This is nice, so something happens, you're dragging, you don't know what's going on. You quickly pull this up, clip it off, deploy your backup anchor, and you're gonna save your boat in case you were going onto the rocks. I will say 170 feet is more than sufficient, but a lot of people, myself included, go with about 250 feet. Now I have a smaller diameter chain, so it's more important that I can do that, but length is always a good option. I would be interested to see how much more chain they could fit into here, but then you run into other problems like overweighting the bow, as well as it may be piling up and jamming on itself. All in all though, seeing how much drop they have to give this, it looks like it works really, really well. So it's a cool setup. Now moving on to their head sail, their jib. It's only gonna go as far back as their shroud, so it's not a huge head sail, but on a boat like this, I think a lot of their power is coming from a 68 foot high mast, that is very, very high, and a 21 foot long boom, giving you a huge mainsail. I know their mainsail and mine were made by Precision Sail, so I gotta drop them a quick thank you, Precision Sails. Check them out, they make a great product and they make it easy to ship anywhere. I got my mainsail from them actually right here in St. Martin, just over there. So now that that's done, back to it. Their port, and <laughs> their port and starboard side jib sheet are really kind of funny. Instead of going with like a, uh, a red and a green to indicate port and starboard, they went with like a neon orange and a neon green. I really like that. I don't know about safety or sailor or whatever, but I just think it's cool to have that sort of a uniqueness to the boat. Spirit Animal has a very loud, peacocking, flamboyant color to it. And if you look at their logo right here, all to the point. They have a really, really cool 
very bright and loud mahi mahi color to it. I know it's not like functional, but I think it's really cool. You know, why not? Moving further back again here, we've got a lot of space up here on the bow. You could have a nice big uh, cushion right here, be able to do yoga, stretch out, whatever. This is a lot of room. There's a lot of options you could be having here. As well, because this is such a large boat, you have this. This boat was originally for the charter fleets before it got knocked by a hurricane. So normally what you would do is you'd have four cabins in the back and then you would have this one up here for the charter captain. The charter captain wouldn't have the best accommodations, but this thing gives you four paying customers so you could really maximize your profit. This now is only for Sash and Roth, so they're not sleeping up here, nor any of their guests. Awesome thing is, when you're a full-time live aboard, you need this space. So what do we have down in here? We have oh, their workshop. Climbing down into here is, well, to put it bluntly, not very luxurious. Now, I'm not sure what they moved up and what they didn't. I'm not really sure how a lot of this stuff ended up happening in here, because is this even... Wow, this is a pretty short cabin. They must have moved one of the walls. It's really hard to tell. Raft did so much work to this boat, I'm not really sure where everything would have ended. This looks original to me here. I think he might have and probably did move maybe this bulkhead back, but there's no way you can. Is this original? Really? So, all right, as I go to do this, my wingspan is, I think, uh, I think 78 inches. I've got a pretty big wingspan, so it's a bit, it's quite a bit more than six feet. So yeah, there's, there's probably is just a little bit more than six feet of, uh, of a space in here. So, okay, you can get a single bed in here. I get that. And then there would have been a little toilet in here and probably even a little sink. Maybe, maybe not. You might've had to go up and out. Either way, it was not terribly luxurious. Also, you'll notice that the hatch bends back that way, not this way, so you wouldn't be scooping air. Just right now, I am hot in here, like, and it's sunset time right now, so really not a great place to be sleeping, and that's why Sash and Roth, they, they took this out, and this is now the workstation for them, their closet, their garage, basically, super jealous. They have all this extra space for hoses, electrical cords, chemicals, and oh, what is this? They have a washing machine. I gotta tell you guys, out of all the boats that I have toured, I think only Monteceros, which is a, what was that, like a 60 foot catamaran? I think that's the only one that had a, a washing machine on board. Looking at this thing, it's not huge. I've actually seen washing machines that are smaller than this one. This looks like really good quality. It's black and decker, so that's pretty sweet. Laundry is one of the few things I still have to go to town for, and it's always a pain, so I'm a little bit jealous of that. They've also got their fenders, their bumpers, extra line. Maybe this is a hammock or a sunshade. We've got, oh, that's a, oh, that's a pressure washer. Pressure washers, sorry, I didn't get so excited. Pressure washers are awesome on a boat. I remember cleaning my boat one time and another sailor got angry at me and he called me uh, a cheater. He, he laughed, he was joking afterwards, I found out, but I thought he was really angry with me because it is. Scrubbing a boat by hand versus using a pressure washer, it's, it's not even on the same ballpark, not even close, so super cool. They've got some of their beach toys up here. So they just have a little bit of everything. It just, it's your garage. So to be able to just stuff some things in here is super cool. Yeah, a great use. Again, that's kind of the big theme of this boat is all the use they got out of the space because it's no longer a charter boat. Ugh. My heart goes out to all the charter captains out there that take people on booze cruises for weeks on end and then have to sleep up in these things. My, my heart goes out to you gentlemen and, and a few women I'm sure as well that are captaining those ones. Um, a big reason why this hatch is opening back this way is if you were ever to forget it like this and a wave comes, if it was the other way, you would fill this compartment like super quick. You, you would like be really, really bad. If it's like this, however, whenever a wave comes, it would stick it down, it would stick it down. It would still not be good, but it wouldn't be near the same. So that's why it's like this. And to forget to lock this thing down before making a passage would be detrimental. You see how these hatches all open the other way so they can scoop the air in? Well, if you do forget that, you'll know it after the first wave when you see water go into your boat. So, so no big deal there. The amount of space there is up here, it, it makes me feel like I'm back on one of the catamarans. This is super spacious monohull to say the least. The line set up here now let's talk about is very simple. Again, this neon style that they went with, I think it's really cool. You know, it really goes in line with their whole, their party mentality, their ethos. So right here, this is the main halyard if I had to guess. And look at that, they're using, <laughs> that's pretty cool actually. Instead of like a normal halyard clip, they're just using a big, a big old uh, carabiner on it. I mean, if it works, it works. 
Funny enough, where we're anchored right now on their boat is right near the International Airport here. And funny enough too, I mean, my boat is just over here. St. Martin's a really cool place, but that airport can be a little bit annoying. So back to it here, let's see if I can figure out what the other lines are. This is the topping lift. It's going all the way back there to the boom. Now they do have a boom cradle. Something that you saw on a lot of older boats and you don't see much now, but I think they did a great job with it, is this boom cradle right here. Uh, Rath has said that basically this would be a lot of creaking. I mean, this is a massive boom here. My boom on my boat, my 38 foot boat is, I think, it feels like it's like 10 feet shorter. It's substantially less than this. This is a very, very large mainsail. They have a very nice stack pack to go on with it. Um, and yeah, I mean, look at all these lines. So it's cool how bright they are. So when you do have new crew on the boat, you can tell them like, yeah, pull on the, pull on the rainbow line, pull on the neon green line, pull on the purple in something. I don't even know what this is. This would be your main sheet though. I can tell that. So I got to say, I'm going to be scoring this boat afterwards. As far as usability goes, it's really, it, it's, it's hitting all the marks for me. I mean, I can see where every control is going. Um, because this is a newer boat, they really stopped doing the winches on the mast. My boat has two winches on the mast, it's an older style. Basically what they found out is you don't want to be going forward to do any of this. You want to do all of this in the cockpit. So I know they're well set up for that, so it's cool to see that. You do have one step right here, one step right here, and you even got one right here. Can you guys guess what this is for? If you guessed, this might hurt barefoot, but I'm going to do it. Nah, it's all right. You're supposed to be able to do this barefoot, it's a sailboat. A little harder to do with the camera. All right, cool. So these little mast ups are great. They're not in the way of anything, but this makes you can get up here right to where your main sail is, clip on your main halyard, raise the main, you're good to go. Zip up and uh, stack back the whole sail down into it. A stack pack on a boat like this is really necessary because putting a sail cover on it would be a real pain. But again, a 68 foot tall mast and a 21 foot long boom, it's gonna give you a lot of sail area. If somebody knows the math on that, please put it in the comments below because I do not do math in my videos. Uh, as far as the other standing rigging goes, we've got two shrouds, one lower and one all the way up. Oh, look at that, but then they diverge up there at the first spreader. That's a really cool design. Beneteau is well known for making the best boats in the world. I am not saying that because I own a Beneteau, I'm saying it because everybody knows it to be true. <laughs> you got your reefing points here, Everything is really standard, really easy to do. Uh, <laughs> Beneteaus are a really good boat though, in all seriousness, and they make their stuff very user-friendly. There's no Beneteau that you can, can't just jump onto and run with it. Sometimes you get on some other boats and maybe the jam cleats or some of the other winches can be a little bit difficult to use sometimes, but I find that Beneteaus are really easy to work with. This boat being a 2006 is fairly new, I would say, uh, especially compared to like my boat in 1984. So it's gonna have a lot of little modern innovations onto it. I really like how much walking space I've got moving forward and back. It's so rare to be able to walk up this tall, this high up. Now I'm noticing they don't have jack lines on here. So I'm curious to ask them why that is see what their reason is for it. But I am seeing really, really good handholds here going all the way up. And looking at how much space they've got, the lifelines are made out of cable. I do feel like you'd be very safe up here, but, but I will be curious why no jack lines on here. I feel like they could have a lot more stuff on here than they do. They already do a really good job of packing everything away. They've got four scuba tanks on board here. Raf likes to do a lot of like treasure hunting underwater, which is really cool. So they've got plenty of space for that. They have their life raft up here. Now, they chose to mount the life raft up here. There's actually space for it back there. They decided to dedicate that as a dive locker. Some of you might scoff at that. I will not scoff at that because dive lockers are important. You gotta have them. You gotta be able to get to your fins and your mask and snorkel. That's a necessity. You might never need a life raft. I know that's not the purpose or how it's supposed to work, but every boat's a compromise. You gotta figure out what works best for you. I agree with this. I think they're plenty safe, but hey, it's just how it goes. It's a little bit loud here sometimes. It's actually not too bad when you're inside the boat, you can't really hear it, but this is one of those rare places you're this close to an airport, but there's so many supplies, so you just gotta deal with it. Moving back to it, um, I'm noticing some of these parts look like they're probably original back to 06, but look at this Harkin, uh, I guess this would be a fiddle block. Let me know if I'm correct on that one. Uh, this fiddle block, you might notice, hey, they didn't go through one of the blocks here, but that's because they didn't have two fiddle blocks to match it up with, so you can't do that. Um, however, they made it work, and obviously, like, you know, it's here now, so, who cares? Moving back a bit more, you've got a really nice big, oh my God, that's so much, that's so much. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit jealous of this. This is, this is a, uh, a dock, a dock box here that they're able to mount up on the front. That's how much space they've got up here. 
Now, I guess too, if you wanted to, you could probably, especially before putting a whole dock box up here, you could have mounted your dinghy up into here, like if you were doing an ocean passage. You probably could still do that anyway, up on the V-berth with how much space is here. But inside here, looks like we've got a compressor. He also has an underwater metal detector here. That's what that arm brace is for. So again, as far as like storage goes on this boat, it's pretty unbeatable. Uh, beanbag chairs are one of those things that I've seen come into popularity in the sailing world over the last few years. And it, it makes sense why, because as you're moving around, you just get settled in even further, unless you relax that much more. I just don't have space for something like this on my boat, or I definitely would. This is like the very beginning of where I start to get jealous of their boat compared to mine. So it's going to on back here to the cockpit. Now the cockpit is a cockpit because it has a bimini structure over it. The bimini structure that he had built, I get a lot of compliments on mine. It pales in comparison to this one. This is the bimini structure of all bimini structures. How level they got it, how good the non-slip is on it. Every every single screw has been properly I don't even know what that is. I know that's the right way to do it, but I don't even know what it is. So it's pretty cool. Let's hop on up here and take a look. He's got a pretty quick way to use this, but really easy to hop up on here. There's a lot of practical applications to having a bimini structure that you can stand on top of. That being said, uh, much like me, but probably more so, Raf finds super cool uses to be up here that aren't practical, but are super fun. Standing up here, flying the drone while sailing, checking out all the sweet shots, throwing parties up here. All of it is so cool to be able to do, and it's, it's just like another space. Now, I'm gonna ask real quick, because I'm sure I can, but can I stand on the solar panels? Okay, so I got permission before standing on solar panels, because I don't like doing this. It hurts my soul, but I know you're allowed to. I know you're able to, yeah. These are a special type of solar panels. He just put them on recently, so he's still kind of testing them. He'll let you guys know about that on his channel. But the amount of solar that they have up here is truly impressive. Now, in one of my other videos, I talked about the four different ways to make electricity on a sailboat. You have petromechanical, which is a generator. You have hydro, which is a little hydro generator you tow behind the boat. You have a wind generator, which is a little windmill, which there's several on boats around here. And then you have solar panels. Now, wind generators have some downsides to them. They need to be maintenance. They, they can vibrate. They don't produce electricity, this and that. Solar panels are cool because there's no moving parts and you need shade anyway two really unique things that they provide. They don't make a sound because they don't move. They don't really need to be maintained if you have them leveled correctly. So right now you can see on this how there's a little bit of dust there, 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 there. That's because that's where the water is pooling. So they might need to once in a while wash it off a little bit, but not really. It's just so cool. All right, out of these 10 solar panels they have here, six hard, four flexible, they have 3,050 watts of electricity. I have 1,000, so this is three times what I have, and they have a battery bank as well that's pretty much three times what I have. So it's really, really cool to be able to have this much so you can run things like air conditioners, a washing machine, whatever it is. And then best of all, you put it up here and you're done. So 10 out of 10, I'll say it again, you guys, this is one of the few boats I've ever been on. This is definitely the, the most boat I've ever been on that I'm jealous of, that I am truly, and actually like, wow, I wish I had this boat. I wish I had these things. Really, really cool. Now taking a look at the rest of the cockpit here. First, we've got the Dodger. They've got zippers on this so they could remove this easily. That is so cool. If a storm is coming, you take this out, the wind's gonna blow right through. So that's really nice that they have that. However, when you're sailing or even just at anchor, the wind is gonna keep you pointed up into the wind direction. So if it's raining, you're totally dry back in here. I just think as far as comfortability and still usability goes, this cannot be beat. Now we've got aluminum here, same as the one I've got on my boat, but this is a fiberglass structure that was professionally done. I don't think Raf did this one, um, but it's, I mean, look at it. Like, look at how perfect that is. I am supremely jealous of that craftsmanship for whoever did that. Coming back here, we've got our starboard side jib sheet, which is gonna be used for most of the time. Ooh, and because this is a dual helmed boat, you could be over here on one, on the high side, or you could be over here on the other, on the low side, and vice versa, you can go back and forth with it. Looking at the rest of this uh, cockpit, check this out. Whew, that's pretty cool. That is super cool, some very custom stuff here. Raf, I think, has a very unique way of sailing. He wants to be able to go party with it, but he also wants to get out there and use it. This boat certainly aired toward the party side of things, but it's cool to see. I mean, there's very few of us that are out here that are 
below, I mean, below 50. There's very, very few of us that own our own boats out here, much less below 40, much less below 30. So being this young on a boat like this is a really unique, really rare thing. Having it as his own to do with what he wants, I think is really cool because this is coming from a style and a perspective that you would not normally see. Most boats that are out here, it's an older retired couple. They don't want to go fast. They don't want to put incredibly gigantic speakers out the back. They don't want to be able to party up on the roof and have a stripper pole in the middle. I can't help but think about all the usability that this stuff has. And that's what's so cool to me. That's why I'm so jazzed up about it. Let's keep this tour going though. The cockpit itself, again, we've got our main winches up here. It's about the same size as one on my boat. And I remember from before, this is the main halyard. Now, I can't normally instantly remember the rigging, the running rigging on most boats, but you see how fast I was able to remember that while filming this video for you guys? Why is that? because it's pretty hard to forget which one it is. I kind of like this, to be honest. Like, why do the ropes have to be, you know, red and blue and black? Why not have some be rainbow, be neon green? I mean, okay, cool. We do have a normal, we got a black one, that's cool. We've got sort of a, you know, these are kind of more normal-ish looking. And then we've got these, you know, it looks like they belong on Sesame Street. I think for the sake of, and I take on crew fairly frequently. Right now we've got Dylan, my crew member on. Dylan, wave for the camera. So having somebody new on the boat, maybe his friends, maybe his family, and being able to show, hey, check out this rigging. You're gonna be pulling on the, the neon orange rope. There's no mistaking what that is. And then later you can say, hey, pull on the neon orange line. Then later you can say, hey, pull on the neon orange line onto the port side main winch. So look how fast you can teach somebody. I think that's really unique. So that's really cool. Another thing that's really cool here is I'm just barely six foot. Look at that clearance. It's wonderful. I love my boat. I love the hard top that I've got, but I cannot stand in my cockpit. I can stand it, but I can't stand in my cockpit. So this is really nice. The couches, the cushions, the sides here, so comfortable. These were very well, very professionally done. Um, this is another really cool thing that they added to the boat. When you go into each one of these to look at that, it lifts up the sides there. So a lot of, a lot of smart innovations were done to this. So here we've got one of our first uh, lockers we can op up, open up into. Look at all the supplies you can keep in there. Storage space is such a premium on a boat, especially access like this. And this is a good place for, for tools, for supplies. I'm gonna, I think that's some fish chum. Big thing that me and Raph have in common is we like to go fishing. We like our spear fishing. The thing about doing a lot of hook and line is you need a lot of space to hold those rods. Well, Raph has that in spades on here. I think being a Florida boy, it's one of those things you just learn that you need. So pretty cool he's able to do that. This table, he did himself, and I think he's gonna keep working on it. Maybe we do it a little bit more. Raph has a background as a carpenter, so he'll be able to get this done. This used to be much different, but I like the low profile that went with this. One solid piece of wood, because I think people do end up dancing up on here, so that's pretty cool. But these are big enough that somebody can sleep on them, and especially while you're on passage. I think that's really cool, especially say you're sleeping right here, and you're like, hmm, I wanna check my progress. Their Garmin chart plotter, right here, look at that. It faces back, so while you're laying here, you can see it. On the starboard side here, it's mirrored. I just love that, it's so much space. You got some lead weights, you can do some workouts, you got your yoga mat, oh, the, the bucket head shop back. Mine has started electrocuting me now after like two years, which is fair, you know, considering where I keep it. Uh, but just how useful all this space is cannot be overstated. I like actually how shallow these are. These aren't like super deep, because this then goes into the aft cabin right here. But just how shallow it is, is a perfect amount of space to have like a tool bag or something. Really, really cool. Oh, what does this do? What do we think this does, folks? This, oh, it's just more storage, okay. Well, it's more storage, and that's a cool thing to have. <laughs> uh, back here to the helms. Looks like you've got you got two different helms, right? But you've got sort of your main one and then your backup one because you don't need to double exactly everything. All right, the next here we've got the throttle. We have the engine gauge. We got the engine hours. Start four. Looks like it's a push button start. Um, everything else you're gonna want over here: your nav lights, chart plotter, autopilot, radar. Uh, his VHF is right here. His lights here, fishing light. That's really cool. When you have a light off the back, it makes it like a like a little aquarium back there, and I I love it. I think that's so cool. Having a VHF right here is really important, just so it's ready and good to go. And obviously, you've got the helm here. This is nice where you can drive it with your hands. You drive it with your feet. You guys might be saying your feet like, yeah, I drive with my feet probably like a quarter of the time. Um, as well as this is nice to stand up. Like it's just, it's a good size helm. Everything works on it. You've got your main winch right here. Really easy to get to as well as the helm. 
you could be sitting here and this person could get to it. So I like the usability that all of this has. This right here is gonna go for your emergency rudder. You're gonna be able to put this post down and here's where you're gonna steer the boat if you really have to. Something I like about this already, I can tell without seeing that emergency rudder post is the space you're gonna to have to swing on that. You want as much leverage as possible. So good to have that. Over here, we pretty much just have everything mirrored. Uh, looks like they've got a... Oh, that is so cool. I did not know what that was at first. This is a manual bilge. I've got one as well, and it is not this, I'm gonna call this sexy. This is the sexiest manual bilge I have ever seen. That is so unique. Man, that's cool. Uh, right here is where he's gonna be filling up his diesel. Again, we've got things mirrored. We have the other helm back here. Now, this is a single rudder boat, not a double rudder boat, but something that's great about having two helms is if there is a cable that snaps on one, you're still gonna have steerage on the other. They're not interconnected. They're made to be separate just in case that happens. And I'll tell you guys what, I'd rather lose my mast than lose my steering. Because if you lose your steering, you are done. Doesn't matter what you're doing, you are done out there. So really cool to see that. Moving on back here. Oh my I just love all this. We've got surfboards up here ready to go. Raf likes to do some uh, some monkeying around while we're here. So it's cool to see he's got a few options to stay fit. I respect that. This is what I meant by where the, yeah. This is what I meant by where the life raft is supposed to go. And this is a good spot. You know, I imagine if they were gonna cross an ocean, they would probably change spaces on it. That's what I would do. You know, you're not gonna be diving while you're in the open ocean, but you might need the life raft. So it's cool to have that option. Uh, but you can see here, they've got like their fins and everything. And it's just such a, it doesn't get any better than this. I mean, this is such a convenient location for it. As well back here, what I really like is we've got more storage. And I like storage. You've got your propane tank back here. Propane is a tough one to keep on a boat because it needs to be ventilated or it could blow up your boat if it has a leak. So it's really cool they've got that. Then on this side, more storage, a ton more stuff back here. Uh, looks like they also do some dishes back here maybe, and they definitely do some filleting right here. So really, really nice to have all of this here. And then lastly, off the transom here, we've got this nice little thing that opens up, and here's their little shower. Now, unlike on my boat, they ran hot water to theirs, so they have full control over whatever temperature they want to have come out of there. That's really nice. They can do a grill. They've got these little, uh, you know, I'll just sit in one of these so you can see. But this is nice. Just hang out back here, watch the sunset, relax. Have a drink. I really like what they've done. This boat has a really good split between usability and enjoyability. But now one of the other things I am most impressed with about this boat is the swim platform. You guys know how much I love swim platforms on boats that were not designed with one like mine. Theirs is, only problem with theirs is it's a little bit too low to the water when there's other boats around because they can produce a wake that'll come up from the back and hit them. An upside of it being lower is it's easier to get up and down to. Just so you guys have an idea for reference, my swim platform is 11 inches off the water. I find most people struggle to get up on that and anybody who's not in good shape cannot. It kinda works for my boat. I don't really want anybody there that's not that in shape. But for them, you know, having multiple people, a lot of parties on the boat, I think it works out better to have a little bit lower. I think it is more enjoyable to be honest. But that's not just the only reason why I like it. I like this because they have a really good mounting bracket. It's super solid. Whoever did their bimini top obviously did this as well. The non-skid is pretty much perfect. Right here, then you've got it a little bit slick, which is nice. Like it's just, it's perfectly professionally done. But also what's cool is when you fold this up, so we come right to here and it folds up really easily. Like the leverage is really, really good. They can then lock it off right there. And now when a following sea comes, it's probably not gonna come all the way back in here. It's probably only gonna come to right here. So this is just, they've got their logo on it. Look at that. Yeah, this is sweet. I'll say it again, you guys, this is really one of the only boats that I am jealous of. They've done such a good job on it. Moving on back to the dinghy. Now they have a high field as well, just like me. So you guys are picking up the trend here, high field and Beneteau, best combination you can have. No, it really is though, you guys. I've done videos on why I think the high field is all around the best dinghy. Now there's certain dinghies that are better at very specific things, but as far as all around everything included, I don't think a high field can be beat. Um, it is a little bit more expensive than some other brands, but you do get the higher quality. So it's up to you what you want to get, especially when you're out in the ocean. I'd rather have the best stuff and I know high field is that. So it's cool to have them uh, out here on the water when you want to go out for a mission. Now, what I do like that he has that I don't have is a 30 horsepower Yamaha. I believe that's an Enduro as well. And it looks like a two stroke if I had to guess. So the Yamaha Enduro 15 horsepower is what I have on my dinghy right there and that works great but to have that much extra horsepower is really cool so it's a little bit dirty right now because they're doing a flea market tomorrow 
But what they did was instead of having a bench that goes across like on mine, they have an ice chest right here, which is probably a Yeti if I had to guess. This is nice, it gives you a really stable platform. But I gotta say for spear fishing, which I do a lot of, which he does a lot of, I would like to probably be putting a, uh, a hard, a hard uh, ice chest under my dinghy. That would make a lot of sense. Something else he did that's really unique is he has this grab bar up here. That's kind of cool so you can throw weight further forward, but they're not going to get too sprayed, too wet. He's got the lock box just like mine. My dinghy is just about 11 feet, so this one looks like it's kind of more like 11 and a half maybe. It's definitely a bit bigger. And then as well, he's got the step up there, which I gotta say, having the box on my dinghy is more than enough, but I do see more and more dinghies that have that on there. That's just so nice when you wanna climb up onto a boat or something. You come up here, you step onto the box, you have a good stable surface too, and then when you're ready, you can put your foot on that. Now, they need to inflate this. This is a deflated dinghy right now. All right, I think we have thoroughly checked out the outside of the boat. Now let's go inside, and some people like the outside, but everybody likes checking out the sailboat insides. And I gotta tell you guys, they did a lot of work in here. So check this out. Walking up into the boat is something else that's really nice. On my boat, you gotta kinda of climb up and in and over, but this is a very nice, easy walkthrough. We've got a very simple companionway. I'm only gonna walk through it backwards because of the camera here, but easy, easy access to walk up and down. It doesn't feel like a boat as much sort of like a house, which is really nice, but welcome to the inside here. Whoa. <laughs> So as I come down here, I asked them for a favor. They were like, you want some water? I was like, oh, I want water out of a Spirit Animal merchandise mug. And they have a water maker, same model as mine, the Seawater Pro, which we'll dive into, but they have a mineral, but they have a mineralizer, <laughs> but they have a mineralizer into theirs, which is gonna add back the minerals that were stripped away in the reverse osmosis process. So let's see how it tastes. It tastes more like normal water. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is St. Martin Lagoon water. Okay? <laughs> so if it St. tastes Martin like normal Lagoon. water out of this lagoon, then we're, it's, it, you can only imagine out in the crystal clear waters of the Bahamas or something. It's, it's true. It's true. I mean, I, I obviously do a lot of swimming here in the lagoon. Uh, people tell me I shouldn't, but I just hope the ecosystem's cleaning up the water. Uh, I just hope. <laughs> I just hope. But I make water here as well, and it's a testament to the Seawater Pro, if I had to say. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but... They do a great job. It's a super simple product, and mine just always works. I've had mine for like, I think almost two years now, and yeah, just same. never had a problem. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're super good, so cheers to that. But now, let's start touring inside. All right, starting from the companion way here, I love it. They've got a lot of their own uh, stickers, uh, brand sponsors I think are on this side, and then yeah, stickers from other pages. Sailing Zangaro, that's James, good friend of mine as well. Who else we got? The Far Side. That was uh, Sasha's channel before uh, I started doing this. Here's one of their stickers, very funny. Parley Revival. So yeah, so we got a bit of everybody on here. It's really cool. I don't have any Adventure Man Dan stickers, so it'll be a little bit while before I'm on there. And then some of the different companies that they've worked with. I'm starting to see a pattern here. Can you guys figure out what it is? Anyway, moving on. So we're first gonna start out with the, oh man, I gotta start with this editing station. <sighs> Yet again, you guys, I am jealous of this boat. This is one of the biggest things I'm jealous of. Um, if you watch their channel, you guys will see how they refit their boat. But this was originally a wall and then here. And if you look at the size of this, you'll be like, hmm, that's big enough for a bed. It's big enough for two beds. This was a bunk bed here. So not only did you used to have four cabins, but then you had two more bunk beds. That's pretty cool because if you think about it, then you could have six individual sleepers as well as two, four, six, eight, ten guests on the boat inside the boat, then your captain up front. Ten paying guests, that's a lot of that's a lot of cheddar you can bring in. But because they turned this into a liveaboard boat, I love it. I love that sick. Um I can't begin to guess who's who. I'm gonna guess, I think I've seen Raf here before. They both have their laptop set up here, and then they have this nice big monitor, as well as, I love that they added this up here. This is just wonderful. But also from a microphone standpoint, they've been telling me they used to edit with a towel over their heads and over the mic, so they wouldn't get this like echoey, echoey thing that you get from the, uh, yeah, from, that's not great for sound, let me tell you. So it's so cool they do that. They're able to actually sit down into a real chair. They have plenty of space. They can dig in for it. And I already know what's coming, but you guys don't. Raf was a professional carpenter, and some of the things that he did is just too cool. Look at this. So Raf did all of this himself. Very, very impressive. These are external hard drives. More external. Look at that. Oh, man. I thought I had a lot of hard drives, and boy, was I wrong, you guys. This is very impressive to see. All the drawers slide really well, really easily. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, look at this. 
Uh, just so you guys know, this is ex pretty much exactly what I'm filming on. I like that they put a bite mount on there as well. That's really, uh, that's a creative one. It's really cool getting to hang out with them, not just for the sake of, you know, we both do spearfishing and sailing, but because we're both, we're all YouTubers, it's really cool to be able to talk together about how we do different things. And even the mount that I'm using right now, which is the same as this one, uh, I put my cell phone, which you guys can't see, but my cell phone goes in the jaws right here, so I can actually read off my cell phone while I'm doing all this. So, kind of cool little tricks of the trade that we're able to share with each other and learn and grow off each other. I really like that. And then the last one down here, got all this stuff. Ah, I'm sure that's nothing too personal, but I don't want to dig into it. So, really cool they've got this. They can do their voiceovers. They have all the different camera bags. That is where their Starlink Wi-Fi comes through. I forgot to show you guys that. This boat does have Starlink, and man, is that just the coolest thing ever. When I told them I didn't have Starlink, they looked at me like I had three arms. They're like, you don't have it? And I was like, I know. Yeah, it'd be one of the things that'd be great to have. It really would. Moving on here. Jeez, we've got charging ports down here. I mean, just the mic set up, ready to go. So nice. And I don't know if you guys can hear, but a plane is taking off now. So it's really not too bad. I mean, I don't know if you can hear any of that even. Moving on over, we have the galley. Remember you guys, like, everything they redid in here. Like, this is not how Benito was. Like, none of this is original. There's no way this right here is original. Check this out, this is so cool. Boop, 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 boop. Look at the size of this sink. I, I don't know any boat that has a sink this size, but this is the size of sink that you want. This boat was supposed to be for chartering, but now it's for living, for live aboard. I just, I'm absolutely in love with so many of the innovations that they did on this boat. They've even got little secret nooks here. Look at this, this is where the drinks are. If you guys are ever on Spirit Animal, now you'll know where, to, where they keep their booze. Um, they did a really cool job too here with this, so they have privacy inside. You know, especially if you ever end up at a marina, you'll want this. They sunk in a two burner stove here. Now, this is so cool, because it looks like a very flush countertop. But right down here, they, oh, there it is. I'm gonna undo that. Full gimbling stove. That's nice. Again, big shout out, big respect to Raf for doing this. I mean, this is some quality. Look at this, look at like, the spacing there. And this side's way closer. He got this one like, he got that one like too close almost. Look, like, there's even a little bit of wear right there. That is so cool. Oh, I think he did this intentionally. Yeah, I, just, I mean, really am admiring the craftsmanship that they put in here. But when you're at anchor, you can lock your stove. You really don't need to worry about it. And then he has an air fryer. I think they like to air fry, I guess. They don't want an oven. So they didn't actually make a gimbling air fryer. So instead, he just made this whole thing, and now it all works. So very cool. Seasonings, we've got... Ooh. Yep. Got a little latch right there for everything. A little bit of twine. Really, really, really well designed everything here. Different spices, pots and pans, more merchandise, bowls. Yeah, like, like this right here, everything. They added this fridge here, and I know they did regret this. They, they don't recommend anybody do it because I just dumped all their coal there. Right now, while I'm talking, I'm just wasting their coal and their electricity. It's just going away to nowhere. The beauty of a top loading, oh, sorry. The beauty of a top loading fridge is you save all that cold that stays you know stuck on down there even the floor right now i can feel the cold on there speaking of the floor look at how nice this is this boat was underwater you guys a hurricane sunk it this is all teak and holly rafted all this himself and i'm gonna have to figure out where he keeps it because you'll notice there's no little bit of hardware to help pull up the, uh, the flooring here use a suction cup that is so cool. You can keep the boat so much cleaner because of that. So, ton of space everywhere, I love it. Got some spots here for your fruits and veggies. And this is such a cool clock they got here. So they actually know what day it is. Really cool. I know this wasn't original, but I like that. All right, over here, we've got the dining room. And I love this custom map they put together and then they epoxied it into the table. That is really, really nice. Easy to sit into here. This is gonna fold down as well. So you can have a whole bed here. Really cool, we call it the cuddle puddle. I've done it before whenever you raft up with another couple boats. Everybody comes over for movie night. And when they do movie night on here, they do it right. That is a projector. Now, where is the screen? Whew. Hidden amongst even more of these rods. Look at that. That is so cool. So then everybody can sit here, watch a movie, put it down, make a bet out of it. Either way, I just think this is such a cool thing. As far as the actual space for dining that you have here, you've got plenty of space and they've got all these names here. 
Those of you guys that don't know, a lot of sailors, myself included, we support ourselves largely with Patreon support. Patreon is a huge way that people can support content creators like us that don't want to have to do ads or sell our souls in any other way or go back to work doing like a regular job. Because believe me, YouTube is a full-time job, a absolute full-time job. And this is great because people can help directly. And that way we don't have to compromise our integrity, which is really appreciated. So it's cool that they've done this. They've been able to lay out these little, these little metal strips of all, um, I don't know, all of their patrons, but a lot of their patrons on here. So yeah, a ton of room. Great to be able to watch the TV there, as well as somebody needs to edit over here. It's just, it's such a big open space and it gives you the sense of like you're in a real house and that's really, really nice. Moving over here, this used to be the navigation station. Now, nowadays we really have everything on our phones and or a chart plotter. Like we don't need to do actual paper charts. This is what this would be for, uh, but around, you know, this was, I think they said a 2006. So around that time they started to, you know, phase that out, but they were still able to make space with it with a very big Dometic. Yeah. Trust me, you guys, being off grid in the Bahamas for months at a time and then having ice cream on your own boat, it's pretty hard to beat. Uh, as well, they're gonna have their 12 volt, their 120 AC panel, stereo. Ooh, I love this. So they can see everything that's going on. Very, very cool. That right there is showing their different loads electrically uh, going across to everything. So really nice and very in line with their brand. It's cool to have a, uh, a ship's bell, but something tells me this isn't a, a normal ship's bell. You might also know the cameras they've got here, and I don't want to say too much about that, but rest assured, uh, Spirit Animal has a comprehensive security system. I can't really talk too much about it, but to say that it's comprehensive. And I am not done talking about the salon yet, you guys. There still is a big thing. This actual island right here. You have more cooking space. You have a very easy to get to trash can, as well as if you want to slide things in and out. More storage, which is cool, blah, blah, blah. Your drinks, blah, 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 blah. More fridge space, blah, blah, blah. Here's what's cool. We're gonna open this. Look at this. What do you want? Oh, you want some pliers? He's got pliers. Oh, you want some wrenches? He's got wrenches. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If your tools are not easily accessible, you will not do the project and you will break things or your boat will be worse for wear because of it. So to have things this well laid out, this accessible, and even have a little workbench right here is so cool to be able to do. Another one of those just great innovations this boat has. There's a number of these swim platform, the uh, the dinghy davit system, the whole bimini structure. You know, these things add up to a boat that you love to live in, and that's what you want. You want to make as few compromises to a normal house as you can. It's difficult. It really, really is. And the only way to come up with these things is by living on a boat for years at a time, which Raf and Sash both have. So it's cool they've figured all this stuff out. Last but not least, here in the salon, we have the engine. Got a big old Yanmar in very good condition. Look how clean all of that is. I love seeing a clean engine. It's a mark of a good uh, mechanic. I know that this engine was a major difficult project for him. It was like seized up or something was majorly wrong with it. I have to check out his channel to get the full story on it, but he did a lot of work to make that uh, a whole process. Moving on back to the cabins here, we've got our first one, port side aft cabin. Something I really like about these bedrooms is that they are head in. I don't like having to go and spin my body around. It's much nicer to be able to just go straight in with your head. I'm sure if I stayed in here, I'd be able to find a lot of lights to turn on and off and stuff. And they've got more storage here. You've got good closet space. Yeah, that's nice. It's, it's, oh, that's really cool too. You've even got a little mirror here. Ah, and now you guys can see how I've been uh, teleprompting all of this. Kind of funny, right? Anyway, it's, it's more of a home than a boat but if this thing is gonna sail like a boat because of its draft, because of its build, because of its mast height and its sail area. You have good space here to fold some things up, put them away. You even got a vacuum cleaner on here. All right, that's a little bit too much for me, but anyway. So we come all the way back here. This is more than big enough for two people. I like the size of it. I like the shape of it. You could go feet in if you wanted to as well, because it's a bit more spacious going this way, or you could just let your feet be wide. Maybe you're somebody who likes to sleep with your feet out wide. Either way, you've got some options there. Just above me here is some of the storage inside the cockpit. Very solid. And then up here, you could have a bookshelf. You could put anything you want to up there. Something else that's gonna be stored back here is the electrical components. The captain just gave me one of the little suction cups here because this is actually the electrical panel. So we're gonna put this on, suction it, oop, and now it just moves right away. Wow, that really is easy. You cannot get this with your fingers, but being able to use a suction cup gets it. And that's kind of good. Maybe you've got kids back here. They won't be able to get in without the suction cup. So right back here is the electrical panel. This is so cool. I was just talking with Raf, and he was saying that he wants to get a sheet of plexiglass and cut it to shape so you can put it across here. And 
I, I mean, I guess you could monitor it, but really just so you could appreciate it. I mean, I think this is art right here. Not only is it art, but it's highly useful. So let's go down the line. Obviously, we've got a lot of Victron. Victron is not cheap, but it's on my boat. It's on pretty much every other boat I know of. They just, they make the most reliable, best stuff, but not cheap. So it's up to you what you want to go with. I personally recommend them. I have no financial gain to be had in that, but yeah, they do a wonderful job. Uh, these are your MPPT solar charge controllers. These are 150 volts. I'm going to guess by uh, 85 amps is what each one of these is going to be rated for. Much bigger than what I have on there. Each one of these then has a breaker on it, which is super cool. Each one of these then has a uh, dongle as well. So he's getting readouts from each one. Just so cool to say the least, like what's in here. I'll be honest, I don't know what every one of these components is for, and that kind of excites me. It's a cool thing to start to learn. Um, we've got a DC to DC charger over there. That's gonna be part of the brains of the system. This is really well done. I just talked to Raf, and he said he did everything himself on this. Really impressive. As well, over here, we've got a temperature sensor that he's built in that if it hits over 100 degrees in here, I think it was 100 and something degrees, this and this fan will turn on. This will suck air from the top, the hotter air, out of here and then this one will push in cooler air from the bottom so you can really efficiently cool this whole thing down but the lighting on this the way this was all done this is just such a professional job in here i'm just like i'm at a loss for how impressive this is it really is cool and then obviously they've got battleborn batteries they are sponsored through them so i'm sure they got some sort of a link for it and stuff like that uh battleborn has supplied many a sailors and youtube sailors for that matter with batteries and they've had a lot of really good reviews a lot of really good success with what they do these ones here i think he has a fifth one as well down below yeah he's got a fifth one like way down over there he has 1350 yes yeah, it's 1350 amp hours at 12 volt. I have like 530 on my boat. So yeah, he's got nearly like three times the production and three times the capacity for electricity on the boat. Obviously it's a bigger boat, but it's still just two people. So it's not exponentially more use, but this allows you to put things like the washing machine, like the air conditioner, really, really cool stuff. I really hope he puts a plexiglass over this because this is something to be admired. I think this is art form right here. Like I would mount this on a wall, you know, it's beautiful. It really is. The doors on this boat are really nice and solid too. Beneteau, Beneteau makes really nice, uh, really nice woodwork. So I do like that. It feels like a real house door. It's nice that you've got the little lock here as well. So you, you feel like you have your privacy. Over here then, I'm betting we're gonna have some engine access. Yeah, look at that. You gotta work on anything, you don't need to worry about it. You just pop this panel out, get to work in there, and you're good to go. We can slide it right back in. We're probably gonna have one as well on the other side, just so we can have full access all around the engine. Again, if you can't get to it easily, if you can't get to your tools easily, you're not gonna do the project and it's just not gonna get done. So cool to see that's there. Now we're gonna take a look on the other side here. This is mostly gonna be mirrored to the uh, the port side. All the lights are gonna be the same. A big difference is this bedroom's gonna be coming with its own sort of ensuite bathroom here where you can close your door and now you can take a shower with the wet head you can use the toilet, you can do everything that you want to do, and you're still kind of in the comfort of your own room. You don't have to go out to your guests or everybody else that's out there. So this bedroom does have a little bit of a benefit because of that. Now, originally this boat would have this one bathroom attached to this cabin, as well as then one and two other bathrooms. But we'll go into the changes they made on that in just a little bit here. Inside the bathroom here, I mean, it's pretty standard. There's not really too much to it. I like the little mat that they got, they cut into here. You're gonna have a little pump that's gonna probably go down to the bilge with that there. So that's where all your water's gonna go. Like me, it looks like they shower out off the back. It's just better. But if you want to, you do have a little holder right here so you can uh, take a shower this way. As well, you close this door. And then if you're somebody else on the outside, you could use this door to come in and out of here. It's just a very, very small wall right here that separates it. Um, we've got a lock here. I mean, really everything's pretty standard. I like this big piece they did. That's pretty nice. They have a very big octopus squid uh, theme going on with the boat. I'm probably not finding all of the lights because there's a lot of these little ones here. They are kind of cool, kind of not. I prefer, honestly, the LED strip lights like they do on my boat. I think that it's just easier to have it all off of one and it go everywhere else, but not really a very big deal. Uh, we've got an engine shut off. We have more engine controls here for the batteries, the house battery bank. Nice to have that. And then more storage here going throughout. Again, it's very much so identical to the previous side. And as well, like I said, what do you know? We have engine access on the starboard side of the boat. It's just to work on the engine, it's such a necessity. And you just pull this whole panel away. You'll notice as well the tilt of the entire engine, just so that way it's pushing back to the propeller shaft, which pushes to the propeller, which propels the boat. So it's cool how all this works. It really is a beautiful thing when it all comes together. Moving on out of this, we are almost done, folks. We are moving up to the main event 
the master V-berth. This is a huge modification. They did the boat. You can barely see some of what was left of what used to be a, uh, a divider here, a little spreader space. I love this. I think this really is what makes the boat something you want to live on permanently, is this used to be two different bedrooms, but no, no, no. Now it is one, one big bedroom, a real, I mean, a real king size bed up on the front. This is the stuff that dreams are made of. This is the type of stuff where you don't feel like you need to go stay at a hotel or whatever ridiculous things people try to say when they're on a boat that they're not comfortable with. This is the hotel. This is, I mean, everything that you could want. Like I said, it takes me a minute to hit all the lights. That's the only thing that I can really say so far. That and there not being two jack lines. Turns out there's a jack line on the port side, not on the starboard side. That's just because they really haven't needed it. They've always been able to go up one side. I'd probably add the jack side on one side and maybe some lights. It's a little bit more central, so you only have to switch one and it lights everything up. But obviously they're making all this work. Obviously they're very comfortable on here. They still have some more work they're gonna be doing. I know that Raf's gonna be adding in a bit more over here so that way this isn't such wasted space because this bed is more than big enough. Yeah, so it's pretty comfortable. I don't even know I'm on a boat right now. This isn't the world's rockiest anchorage, but my boat does move substantially more. So there's a lot of uh, stability here. Look at the fact that, again, I'm like six foot. I can easily lay this way on the bed. I mean, I can lay completely horizontally. Say it was a super rolly anchorage. This would be really nice. If you had a lot of side swell on the boat, you can lay on it sideways. And a lot of the beds on my boat, sometimes I sleep with my feet off the edge. It doesn't bother me at all. I mean, I can go completely. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty great. That is pretty wonderful. <laughs> Good as new. Good as new. Something else that's kind of funny to me that you can see immediately is whose bed is which side and whose bed is the other is over here we have like wallets and like the most like, I mean, just look at the colors alone. It's just like blacks and browns. And then over here we have like the spectrum of the rainbow. So this is obviously Sasha's side. This is obviously Raph's side. You know, Cabela's hats and everything. Raph likes his hats, but a closet right here. I think that's what he's going to be doing is turning a lot of this this way into more closet space. Like I said, it's like, this is cool to have just for the sake of like, I don't know, moving around the bed. It's nice to have more free space. Obviously, you no know, house sticks their bed like in between two walls, but on a boat, it's unnecessary. So he's going to be working on this. I know he's going to be putting uh, more into here and as well. Yeah, there's going to be God knows how much space for storage up in here. Ooh, oh, that is really nice. Wow. Last feature I got to show you guys about this boat that I think is really cool is this. <laughs> Because sometimes you don't want to leave your bed. You don't want to go put the projector down. You just want to watch some mindless YouTube real quick, you know, or maybe your favorite Adventure Man Dan YouTube channel or maybe your favorite Spirit Animal YouTube channel. So you're just going to pop this on real quick and, uh, and, and away you go. Look at this. It's nice. It's right close to you. This is another really, really cool uh, investment they made into the boat. Normally, this would have been right here is where it would have split the boat. Uh, because this isn't a catamaran, he could take these walls out. It really wasn't a big deal. The compression post is here, and you still have two doors as if it would have been the two bedrooms here. But when he, put, he took them out, you now have two hatches bringing air down into the boat. Because it used to be two different cabins, and you'd have four cabins plus the bunk beds on here, they had three full showers and bathrooms on the boat. So it was one and then two over here. This one they kept as a uh, as a toilet, but they made it just the toilet. They want it to be nothing else. You could still use it as a wet head, but they don't. So it's pretty standard what's in here. I mean, you've got the toilet, you've got the sink, you have the, the mirror. This is their main toilet area. And you also have some very nice artwork here. Over here, however, they turn this into a full dedicated shower. They took out the toilet, showers up here. This is for nothing else. You don't have to move anything out of the way. Oh, that's pretty nifty. I like that. I like that a whole lot. That's really cool. There's a lot of cool little innovations that they've added to the boat. I mean, I see a lot of things on here that I would want to do on my boat, and that's really nice to see. You're going to have a lot of ventilation here. You're going to have a full shower feeling. You don't have to shower outside every day. I think I might have said that earlier, but when you have it like this, there's no reason to. You can come and be in here in your own privacy, you know, and uh, have a dedicated shower up above you. All right, so to sum up why I like this boat so much, I'd say, number one, the huge master v-birth bed i mean it it feels like i'm in a house it's great that's the first one i really like the huge huge kitchen with the big sink 
really like that. The projector coming down here with also a ton of space on here, like that. The editing station is amazing. Now this maybe as well you work off grid, you work off uh, online and you wanna be able to work off grid. This is perfect for you. So this is really, really cool. The swim platform in the back, I see that's like number four, I think I'm up to. The bimini structure at number five. These all together just make such a usable boat because they took a boat that was meant for four cabins plus two bunk beds and then they brought it down, no bunk beds, three cabins, one very big master cabin. It just makes an incredibly livable space. All right, thank you guys so much for sticking through that entire tour, but now is a really cool section where we're gonna have to sit down and talk with Raf and Sash about their background, how they redid the boat, their whole history, and it's really cool getting an insight to them, their YouTube channel, their travel background, and their future plans. So let's get into that. Ooh, hey guys. Hello. Pretty cool to see how uh, life is like here on Spirit Animal. <laughs> it's not every night we get kicked out of our own boat and have to drink wine and watch the sunset, so this is kind of rare. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a hard man to work with. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on this adventure. I hope you feel inspired to begin adventures of your own. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. For an exclusive, in-depth look at this adventure lifestyle and to further support my channel, become a member of my Patreon crew. Link in the description. I'll see you on the next adventure.